Hello friends, myself Dr. Durga. I am from Chadnad Hospital and Research Institute. In this lecture, today we are going to discuss about the AV blocks that is the atrioventricular block which is also known as heart blocks and bundle branch block. In the next two slides, I am going to discuss about the conduction system and the normal ECG just to revise fast. See, this is the SA node. From the SA node, there is initiation of the electrical impulses which leads to start the contraction. Now, these electrical impulses from the bundle of thoral, backman and Wenke back via atrial myocardium goes to the AV node. In the, what is the unique property of this AV node? The AV node has a decremental response or delays. What is important of this delay? Actually, this protects the ventricle from the fast atrial arrhythmias. After this AV node, it is the bundle of his. By the bundle of his, it goes to the left and right bundle branch. And in the left bundle branch, it goes to the left anterior division and left posterior division. Both these bundle branch ultimately divides into a network of conducting uh, system which is known as Purkinje fibers. So, this is how there is the activation which starts from the atria and comes to the ventricle. Okay. Here we are going to discuss about the blocks which occurs in the AV node and the bundle branch. See, this electrical impulse, generation of these electrical impulses and uh, traversing through the atrial ventricle mechanism produces uh, changes in the action potential which can be seen in the ECG. So, through the different waves. We all know that we see the 3, 4 waves that P, Q, R, S, T. Okay? So, this P wave actually represents the atrial depolarization. Q, R, S complex represent the ventricular depolarization. This P, R segment represents the AV nodal that is atrioventricular nodal conduction time and then T wave represents the ventricular repolarization. So, these are the features of the normal ECG. The rate is usually between 100 to 60 beats per minute with regular rhythm. P wave is usually upright in lead 1 and 2 and negative in AVR. Each QRS complex is preceded by a P wave and these QRS complex is usually less than 100 millisecond wide. PR interval remains constant. PR interval remains constant. Okay? So, these are the features of the normal ECG. Here you can see this is the P wave, this is PR segment, then this is QRS and then this is T wave. This is how the normal complex looks like. Okay? Now, we will go to the our topic that is the atrioventricular nodal blocks or heart blocks. So, what is this atrioventricular nodal blocks or heart blocks? Whenever there is a disturbance in conduction of the impulses through the AV node, there it leads to AV blocks. Okay? Whenever there is a disturbance of conduction through the heart which is particularly occurring at the AV node, it can be because of any disease or damage of the AV node. Either there is a delay or there is a total block of impulses to get passed through the AV node. These conduction defects can be detected from the ECG. See, this AV nodal conduction time as I told you is represented in the ECG by a PR segment. But usually we do not measure PR segment, we measure PR interval. So, what is the difference between this PR segment and PR interval? Look at this ECG. PR segment is starts from the end of P wave to the start of R wave. But the PR interval is from start of P wave to the start of R wave. Okay? This is what is the difference between the PR segment and PR interval. Usually, we do not measure PR segment, we measure PR interval. So, when, uh, so this hard blocks can be divided into three types that is the first degree hard block, second degree hard block and third degree hard block. This third degree hard block is also known as complete hard block. And then again, the second degree hard block is divided into other three subtypes that is the Mobitz type 1, Mobitz type 2 and advanced second degree hard block. In this advanced second degree hard block, we will be just looking at the 2 is to 1 block. Okay? So, first is the first degree hard block. Actually, to call it as a block is a misnomer. There is no block. There is a delay in the conduction through the AV node. There is a delay in the conduction. So, actually, the AV node conducts more slowly than the normal. So, there is occurrence of the prolonged PR interval. PR interval is prolonged, but it is usually constant. 
पी आर इंटरवल इज ग्रेटर देन पॉइंट टू सेकेंड्स और मोर देन फाइव स्मॉल स्क्वेयर्स बट इट इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो पी वे विल बी पी वे विल बी नॉर्मल क्यू आर एस विल बी नॉर्मल देर विल बी ओनली प्रोलॉन्गेशन ऑफ द पी आर इंटरवल मोर देन फाइव स्मॉल बॉक्सेस सो यू कैन सी इन दिस द रिदम गिवन बिलो द सी इफ यू काउंट द पी आर इंटरवल दिस इज वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स हियर वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सो इट इज प्रोलॉन्ग मोर देन फाइव बॉक्सेस बट इट इज कॉन्स्टेंट इन ईच ऑफ द इन ऑल द रिदम्स ओके सो सो वॉट आर द पॉइंट यू शुड रिमेंबर अबाउट द फर्स्ट डिग्री हार्ट ब्लॉक देर इज अ प्रोलॉन्ग ए वी कंडक्शन विच लीड्स टू प्रोलॉन्गेशन ऑफ द पी आर इंटरवल यूजअली द क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स इज नैरो एंड इफ क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स इज नैरो इट सजेस्ट दैट द ब्लॉक इज इन द ए वी नोट the site of involvement can be atria can be av node can be hispergenji usually we find out by the qrs so the qrs is usually if it is narrow then it says the origin is in the av node clinically uh, the patient does not have any symptoms the prognosis is good and no treatment is required then comes the second degree heart block this second degree av block is diagnosed when one or the more impulses the atria is not transmitted to the ventricles when some of the atrial impulses are not transmitted to the ventricles then it is known as second degree heart block as i told you the second degree heart block is of three types type morbid type 1 that is wenke back morbid type 2 and advanced second degree heart block so first is morbid type 1 so what occurs in morbid type 1 is there is progressive increase in the pr interval or progressively delay in the conduction of impulses which leads to increase in the pr interval until one of the atrial beat or p wave is not transmitted to the ventricle until one of the atrial impulse is not transmitted to the ventricle see in the rhythm below <coughs> sorry so this is pr interval if you see this pr interval is progressively increased this says that the conduction to the ab node is progressively increasing and then this is the p wave which is not getting transmitted this is what is drop beat this is what is drop beat okay progressive increase in the conduction time followed by one of the atrial impulse will not be transmitted so what you have to remember about the morbid type one is the pr interval is not constant and it is increasing progressively till one of the beat is not transmitted that is drop beat the pr interval is longest just before the drop beat and shortest just after the drop beat <clears throat> if you look at the difference between the longest and the shortest pr interval the it is more than 100 milliseconds the ratio of p is to qrs is usually 3 is to 2 but it can be 4 is to 3 or 5 is to 4 commonly being is 3 is to 2 so what are the symptoms which you get usually lethargy fatigue or light headedness and sometimes confusion this rhythm is usually benign does not produce any hemodynamic changes if at all the patient is symptomatic you can just give atropine or needed you can go with the pacemaking this can be transmitted to third degree heart block but the risk of transmitted heart disease heart block is low so here i am giving you one scenario look a 70 year old female comes with a history of hypertension and diabetes and dyslipidemia present to the casualty with a history of intermittent palpitations and breathlessness she also stated that she has uh, uh, dyspnea on exertion on inquiring she does not give any history of chest pain or syncope or near syncope cough or any other complaints and while looking at the monitor we get the following rhythm in the ecg let's see here just look at the pr interval you take the last rhythm stream look at the pr interval see this pr interval is progressively increasing till one of the p wave is not transmitted so this is drop beat okay the pr interval just before the drop beat is longest and the pr interval just after the drop beat is shortest if you take the difference of the shortest and the longest pr interval is definitely more than 100 milliseconds you can count these small boxes and subtract and you will get the difference is more than 100 milliseconds 
So, with this criteria we can say in this ECG the patient is having a block, Mobitz type 1 block. Okay. And this phenomena is known as, this progressive increase is known as penky back phenomena. Next come is the Mobitz type 2 block. So, what happens? Some but not all, the sinus P waves is transmitted to the ventricle. So, there is a, there is a drop beats, but this conduction failure, this conduction failures occur suddenly. See, in the last what we said that there will be progressive increase in the PR interval and then one of the uh, P wave will be dropped. Here what happens is suddenly one or two P waves will not be transmitted to the ventricle. So, there is a sudden failure of conduction of some but not all sinus P waves to ventricle that is drop beats. But the PR interval is constant. Look at this rhythm strip, this P wave is not transmitted. Here this P wave is normally transmitted, it here it also, here also, but suddenly again this P wave is not transmitted. Okay. So, there is a sudden failure without any preceding increase in the PR interval. And if you see the uh, PR interval, it is 1, 2, 3. Here also it is 1, 2, 3. In this beat also it is 1, 2, 3. So, the PR interval is constant. So, constant PR interval with sudden failure of conduction of the atrial impulse to the ventricle that gives to Mobitz type 2 block. So, what are things we should remember? in the Mobitz type 2 block is conduction fails suddenly and unexpectedly without any preceding change in the PR interval. And usually the QRS complex is wide. The PR interval is constant both before and after the occurrence of a drop beats. Mostly the problem is in the infranodal conduction system. So, there is one important clue. The important clue is when you want to differentiate between the Mobitz type 1 block and type 2 block. So, in the Mobitz type 1 block what happens? There is progressive increase in the PR interval then a drop beat. Here the PR interval will be constant and then sudden appearance of a drop beat. This is how you differentiate between the Mobitz type 1 and type 2 block. Okay. Here also the symptoms is maybe fatigue or dizziness or experience syncope and syncope. There is high chances that it may uh, uh, land up in third degree heart block. So, permanent pacemaking is the treatment of choice. So, here I am giving you one more scenario. The 70 year old female known case of diabetes and hypertension presented with lightheadedness, dizziness and pre syncope since last two days. No history of any chest pain on examination. You found that the patient is having regularly irregular pulse. The BP is 90 50 and the mm, uh, heart rate is around about 47. And when you look at the uh, ECG monitor, you got the following rhythms. So, look at the rhythm. This is QRS, which is white, and this is P wave, which is not transmitted. Again, this is a P wave which is transmitted with a white QRS. This P wave is transmitted with a white QRS. Again, these are the two P waves which are not being transmitted. Okay. So, there is a sudden appearance of a, or sudden failure of the impulses to get transmitted to the ventricles, and then these are all drop beats. Okay. If you look at the, this is drop beat, if you look at the PR interval, the PR interval will be constant even before and after. There is no change in the PR interval. So, with these features, you can say that the patient is having a Mobitz type 2 block. Okay. Now comes the advanced second degree block. When we are not able to categorize these blocks into Mobitz type 1 and type 2, then we classified it as a advanced second degree heart block. In this, we will just see a 2 is to 1 block. For every 2 P waves, there will be 1 QRS. See in this rhythm below, this P wave is not transmitted, this P wave along with the QRS. So, 1, 2 P waves, for 2 P waves, there is 1 QRS. Again, 1 and 2 P waves, for 1 P waves, for 2 P waves, there is 1 QRS. Okay. So, what are things occurring here? There is every alternating P waves are not conducted or blocked. It is difficult to diagnose the level of lesion in this case. Uh, narrow QRS complex may be nodal or infranodal, but wide QRS is almost always infranodal. This can also progress to third degree heart block. Usually symptoms are uncommon, but the same symptoms, some lightheadedness, dizziness, lethargy can be there. See, if the lesion is at the level of AV node and the patient is asymptomatic, then usually the prognosis is good, you do not have to treat the patient. But 
if the patient is symptomatic then irrespective of the node or av or infranodal you have to treat the patient with the permanent pacing okay this is what is advanced heart block now we we'll move on to the so here one ecg here also you can see in the last rhythm strip one p wave is not transmitted another is, so all the alternating p waves is not being transmitted this p wave not transmitted this is with qrs this again is not transmitted so every alternating p wave is not transmitted this the patient is having a fixed ratio 2 is to 1 block okay now this is the third degree heart block which is also known as complete heart block so there is a complete absence of atrioventricular conduction none of the impulse from the atria is transmitted to the ventricles there is a complete av dissociation with the atria and ventricles is having their independent rates no relation between the p and qrs and usually the patient is having a severe bradycardia there is a escape pacemaker this escape pacemaker can be in the av node or it can be infranodal in the his bundle bundle branches or distal to it even the myocardium itself which has a automaticity of 10 to 15 beats per minute usually the patient is symptomatic busy spell uh, there can be pre syncope syncope frank syncope even sudden cardiac arrest can also occur now this the level of block can be at the level of av node or at the level of his perkenji system when it is at the level of uh, av node it, the, it shows a junctional rhythm with narrow qrs when it is level of perkenji it shows ventricular escape rhythm with wide qrs so uh, what are the points we should remember for saying the patient is having a complete heart block p wave rate is normal complete dissociation between the p waves and qrs complexes p can fall on st t segment and usually the atrial rate will be faster than the ventricular rate you can just see this is the p wave this shows the atrial rate here the p wave is here then here 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 so p is going on its own there is no connection between the p and the qrs this qrs is going on its own if you see the rate difference between the uh, rr and pp see the atrial rate is higher than the ventricular rate okay so these are the features of a complete heart block there is a av dissociation and then p wave rate is faster than the ventricular rate so uh, you are getting uh, uh, an old lady female bring uh, uh, what to the casualty you observe her skin is cyanotic it's blue she is sweaty she is having gcs of only 8 bar 15 she is only responding to painful stimuli and then the paramedic says that her bp is only 44 systolic with a heart rate of around about 34 beats per minute and in the ecg the following rhythm is seen and look at the monitor this is the rhythm so here with this you can say this is p wave so somewhere here this is p wave this is p wave this is p wave this is p wave so p wave it's going on its own and qrs is going on its own so there is a av dissociation you can see the atrial rate is more than the ventricular rate here in this ecg it is also visible that the patient is having an st elevation okay so patient is having an acute mi so acute mi is also one of the cause for the complete heart block so in with these findings in this ecg we can say patient is having a acute mi with a complete heart block now we will move on to the bundle branch block okay so first is the right bundle branch block there are three criteria to say the patient is having a right bundle branch block first is the qrs duration will be greater than equal to 120 milliseconds the qrs duration should be greater than equal to 120 milliseconds there is rs r dash pattern or notched r wave in even c rs r dash small r s and then dash okay big r so rs r dash pattern in lead v1 along with a terminal s wave in lead 1 avl and v6 if you look at the lead 1 avl and v6 there will be wide terminal s wave these are the three criteria by which you can say the patient is having a right bundle branch block 
Now, the, uh, the, there are two types like complete and incomplete. There is not much difference between complete and incomplete. If you want to say the patient is having an incomplete right bundle branch block, this is only the QRS duration differs. The QRS duration in those patients is in between 110 to 120 millisecond. It will be more than 100 but less than 120 milliseconds to say the RBBB of incomplete type. But you remember these three criteria to say if the patient is having right bundle branch block or not, okay. So these are some of the causes and then if we say about the clinical significance, RBBB is commonly seen and including in adults and usually benign. But when this right bundle branch block occurs in setting of MI, acute myocardial infarction, then the patient is usually has a poor prognosis and it indicates that the patient is having a proximal LAD occlusion. Then comes the left bundle branch blocks. So these are the five criteria for a left bundle branch block. If you want to say the patient is having a left bundle branch block that is LBBB, QRS duration should be greater than equal to 120 milliseconds. There should be a broad R wave with the initial swearing. You can see there is a broad R wave with initial slurring in lead 1, AVL, V5 and V6. Broad R wave with slurring in lead 1, AVL, V5 and V6. See, there will be prominent QS or small R and S pattern in lead V1. Prominent QS or RS pattern in lead V1. Then there is absence of absence of small q wave in lead v6 normally there is a small q wave present in the lead 6 which will be absent if the patient is having a lbbb and then the prolonged r wave peak time is greater than 60 milliseconds in lead v5 and v6 this is r wave peak time is greater than 60 mill usually normally it is less than 35 seconds but in lbbb it becomes more than 60 seconds in lead V5 and V6. So you have to take the point at this is R wave and this is from here to here you, you have to see this difference. This difference is more or this duration is more than 60 milliseconds to so say R wave peak time is prolonged. So these criteria says that the patient is having a left bundle branch block. First is QRS duration more than 120 milliseconds. Then there is a slurring of the R wave in the lead 1, AVL, V5 and V6. So there is a broad R wave in V1, AVL, in lead 1, AVL, V5 and V6. There is a QS or RS pattern in lead V1. There is a QS or RS pattern in lead V1. Then there is an absence of small Q wave in lead V6 and the R wave peak time is more than 60 milliseconds, okay. These are the few causes of the left bundle branch block. Then comes the clinical segment. It is this uh, LBBB is almost always pathological and generally a marker of the underlying left ventricular heart disease. New onset LBBB says the patient might have an underlying ischemia and infarction and needs a thrombolytic therapy. Then LBBB in the setting of uh, uh, MI, acute MI deteriorates the prognosis. Also if we want to uh, 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 say about the left ventricular hypertrophy, if the LBBB is present then the normal LVH criteria is not applicable and the presence of this LBBB says there is a ventricular dyssynchrony in presence of heart failure. So the, the ventricle, both the right and left ventricle should contract in a synchronized way. The patient is having LBBB in presence of heart failure, then it says the patient is having a dyssynchrony, ventricular dyssynchrony. So this is about LBBB. Then a small uh, few things about the Holter monitoring. Holter monitor is a small variable device that keeps track of heart rhythm. A Holter monitor uses electrodes and a recording device to track the heart rhythm for 24 to 48 hours. That is also known as ambulatory electrocardiography. Here we can record the ECG or get the ECGs or rhythms for a extended period of time. 
So, how it works? This there is a small monitor, just uh, size of the playing card, and there are several leads and wires which are attached to these monitor. There are three surface electrodes, and these surface electrodes are connected on the chest wall with the help of a gel. To this, the metal electrodes are con um, connected, and this conducts the heart's elec electrical activity through the wire to the halter monitor, where it is recorded. So, when you should go for a uh, uh, halter monitoring when you want to diagnose and assess the cardiac arrhythmia and conduction abnormality, whether the patient is symptomatic or asymptomatic, you can use this. If the patient is having a recurrent syncope, near syncope or episodic dizziness or if the patient is having a uh, recurrent uh, palpitations unexplained, then you can go with the halter monitorings. So, how it helps? The advantages is it gives you uh, 24 to 48 hours of full disclosure is available in that and that you get a uh, heart rate graphs and atrial fibrillation, burden graphs, all those things. Disadvantages is uh, 24 to 48 hours is a short duration and sometimes the patient may not have the symptoms at that specified period of time, then it is difficult to diagnose. If the symptoms are very much intermittent, then the yield of the test is low. But say if you get these type of differences in halter monitoring, it is alarming. If you get a second Mobitz type 2 or third degree AV block, that is alarming. Sinus pauses, if it is more than 3 milliseconds, 3 seconds, then it is alarming. Marked bradycardia during waking hours or tachyarrhythmias, all these things if present, this is the patient is having an alarming arrhythmias. Okay. With this, I am finishing my topic. Thank you so much.